Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning everyone. everyone. Now, now this time for us to begin our morning worship, worship service, I ask, I ask you all, all please stand, stand with us. us. Stand, stand with us as we come, come in and serve the Lord, Lord on this morning. morning. accept our worship, that we will be uh, able to impact your world, Father, not just through our worship, but through our lives, and that your kingdom will be done, uh, will be powerful, and will expand. May your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now we come to the time we partake 
and the, the death, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Christ in communion. I'm so, so glad. glad. I'm so glad you died for me. I'm so glad you shared your love for me. I'm so glad you rose for me. now time for communion. I will be reading from John chapter 6 verses 53 through 54. And it says, so Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for just 
bringing all of the people together, keeping all of us safe. As you know, it is the youth month. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just, just doing what you are supposed to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This time we want to take a moment just to acknowledge that everybody is here by divine appointment and because it's a divine appointment there are some of you that don't normally associate with this community uh, but we want to say welcome to you uh, as you are visiting with us at the Community Church of Christ now because you had other options and even people who are online listen it's real easy for y'all to type in and go anywhere else in the world uh, but you typed in and chose to be here with us at the Community Church of Christ. Uh, but if you are here in the building, I want to show you, first of all, Mississippi hospitality. Because where I come from, um, when people are visiting and they your friends and they meeting your other friends, then it's your job to introduce your friends to your old friends. All right, now that's where I come from. So I'm going to show y'all, I got my, my friend, my very first friend. Uh, uh, some of y'all have, have accused her of being my twin or me being her twin. But anyway, my mother is here and I just want to say, how you doing, my mother? Uh, now. Uh, for the rest of y'all, maybe y'all don't want to introduce your friends, and maybe you came and you didn't have a friend. I'm your friend. Let me be your friend. If y'all will, and you're visiting with us, will you take a moment to stand so we can acknowledge your presence and see, who, uh, see you here? Amen. Just so y'all know that we are not confused, uh, we do not have an identity crisis going on. We are in the process. Uh, we have officially changed our name, so we are officially Community Church of Christ. 
but as that is the case, we are uh, transitioning in every other way, and y'all will see that this song will change, but we still want to give y'all something. All right, we want to give y'all something. At this time, we're going to ask uh, our elders and deacons if they will come forward for a moment. Good morning. Good morning. We, uh, as leaders here at the Community Church of Christ, we come together at this particular time to come before the congregation with an appeal. Uh, and we talk about community, and we look at what, what community means. Community is a group of people come together with a common cause and a common purpose. And we come before you at this time with that particular cause and purpose. We normally wouldn't be doing this, but because of the, the severity of the occasion, we want to present this to the congregation to, uh, for this appeal. We normally don't use people's names when we ask for, for assistance, but we've been given permission to use this individual's name and their family. Uh, they have had a they, matter of fact, they didn't come to us, we went to them because we had, we had a sense of uh, concern about how things were going and the direction things were going in and it got to the point to where it got almost kind of uh, catastrophic or critical. We are uh, in the form of our brother Andre Thompson. Uh, brother Thompson is, of course you know, he's going through a process of cancer and the, the treatments and it's taking a devastation on himself and his family. Uh, he has two kids in college, you know, and he's not, he hadn't been able to work. And so his appeal that we asked them what, what, can we, what can we do as a congregation exceeded what we normally would do in benevolence. And I'm gonna have one of the deacons come up and discuss that as we go on, but as, as leaders here, we want to come before the congregation and give you an opportunity to help us help him. And so right now we're looking at, we don't wanna, we, we, work, we, want, we don't wanna do it today because we know this is, uh, this is short notice. We wanna start on next Sunday and the previous Sunday to have an opportunity to come and contribute something towards Brother Thompson and his family. And uh, please continue to keep them in your prayers. Uh, the amount that's been asked for is, is over the amount that we normally give in benevolence. And so we don't, we don't want to try to put that out there for him. We just want to know that, that, that him and his family need some help. And we're going to be here as a community to help him and do whatever we can to help him. As I said before, normally we would, we would do this, but we wouldn't put the individual's name out there. But he said he didn't mind us, let, you know, we talked to him on yesterday. We, you know, the elders we meet on every, every Saturday. And we called him to find what was going on. We said, no, we can't let you suffer by yourself. Amen. So we want to be there for you. So anything we can do, so we found out what, it, what he needed. I said, well, we, that exceeds what we can do, but we're going to take this before the community. And so we asked the community on next Sunday and the Sunday after that, and it's even as far as you want to go to try to help this family out with this, with this burden. Uh, at this time, we're going to have Deacon uh, Brown come up and present the, the, uh, the uh, appeal from the Deacon standpoint and also from the other leadership's standpoint. Just to give a quick overview of the individual we're talking about, this is, for most of you guys know, this is just not a guy. So I'm gonna kind of go through some things that he has done for this congregation. Outreach ministry consists of making sure the annual backpack and back to school drive is going successful, Thanksgiving giveaway, angel tree, mother and father day acknowledgement, teaching, preaching, serving whatever capacity JK needs him to, partnering with the community, the businesses around here to make sure our schools in this community are taken care of. Anything that has to do with an impact on this community, he spearheads. Anything that has to do with the minister's appreciation, he spearheads. Anything that has to do with any type of outreach that brings notoriety to Christ in this congregation, he spearheads. This is who we're talking about. 
We talk about an outreach, right? Outreach is given to somebody that there's a need somewhere in a community. Well, we're not talking about the community right now. We're not talking about an outreach right now. We're talking about an inreach. We're talking about an inreach to one of our brothers that have worked his butt off in the kingdom to make sure, to make sure. So, I want you guys to, to if you got to close your eyes and imagine this, do it. However you get locked into this, do it. Imagine having a family and you the, you the breadwinner of that family. Not saying that Michelle doesn't bring money home, but just imagine being a man and being the leader of that family. Imagine having two kids in college, one at Harvard. Now imagine you having a budget of $10,000 at your house. This is probably not what they have, I'm just saying. Imagine. Imagine you bring home $12,000, but you budgeted for 10. I mean, you still got a little 2,000, you got a little room to work with, right? Now imagine losing half of that. Imagine losing $6,000, now you got 6,000 coming in, you still have a kid in college, two kids in college, you still have a car note, you still have mortgage, you still have all these things that you need to be okay. Now imagine you sitting on your back, you gotta go to get treatment. Treatment ain't free. Imagine your boy, your son in college, worried about his daddy while he's at Harvard trying to be the best he can be. And his daddy can't do nothing to help him because his daddy can't really help himself. Imagine Michelle trying to think, how am I going to keep this thing together? Because I know women are the backbone of the house. I know that. I got one. I know that. But the dad is still the leader. Imagine you can't lead at this time because you just can't get out of bed to go lead. Because you can't work. Because you be around anybody, you might get sick, which may slow your process of healing. Imagine that. Paul talked about in Philippians 4 about the church trying to give him things and help him out. He said, I'm good. I'm content. But I don't think Paul had a mortgage on that tent that he was living under. I don't think Paul had a note due on that donkey he was riding. I don't think Paul had kids in college trying to better themselves. But Paul still came back and said, church, I'm content, but I still thank you because y'all came through when I needed it. Well, guess what? Brother Thompson needs us. His family needs us. And this is just not gonna be a one-time thing when we pass the bucket like we do on Sacrificial Sunday. We get $3,000, okay, we're good. Bills don't stop. So, what we're gonna try to do is come up with a pledge. Whether it be $10 a month you can give, $25 a month you can give, 50, 100, everybody here is different. Everybody here is different. So we're not trying to break you to help him, but just a little bit, man, just a little bit helps. I can't imagine being in that situation right now. I can't, and I hope the guy, he don't put me through that. But our own brother Thompson is in that. And y'all have heard him several times get up here and make a pledge for somebody else. And now we here making a pledge for him. So Mountain View, Community Church, Christ, it's time for us to build community, come together, and let's figure out how we're going to help our brother. This is a very touching and emotional thing because everybody up here is a father. We got a lot of fathers out there that know what it means to be the family, the leader, the leader. 
Wives, you know what it means for your husband to lead. So, next week, like we said, we're going to start this pledge. So start thinking about what can I do? How can I budget? I still got my job, but how can I budget a little bit to help the Thompsons out? Because they down to one income now, where they used to operate on two incomes. Yeah, I keep saying that because I want you to understand the realness of this thing. He's not going to be healed tomorrow. He don't have COVID. He don't have the flu. He don't have sinuses or allergies. He has cancer. And cancer costs. And no, I'm not fussing. I just want you guys to understand, man, this thing is, I, it, it touched me this morning to hear that he's in, I knew he was going to be in need, but when you hear it and you understand it, it's like, man, my brother, my brother, the same brother get everything organized for this congregation, for everything we do. It's time for us to be organized and come together for him. Thank you. Before, before we leave the stage, we're going to ask the deacon, I mean, I'm sorry, Bishop Thomas would come up and pray on behalf of Andre and his family. Let us pray. God, we come once again thanking you for the blessings that you have bestowed on us. We thank you for all of us being able to be here today that we may be able to lift our brother and his family up in prayer, that we, we may be able to come together, that we may be able to give in a way that will bless his family. We ask that you would bless them right now, Father. We realize that they are in need, and we pray that those who have the funds to help will bestow them those funds upon the family. We pray, Father, that you will continue to guide them and lead them in their faith, that they may continue to hold your unchanging hand. Father, we ask that you bless the children that are off in college and give them comfort, give them stability, give them all the things that they need that they can also focus on their schoolwork. Father, we pray for the wife who is continually uh, doing her part and we ask that you will just give her the strength that she needs that she may continue to support her husband and still be able to do the things that she needs to do we thank you father for this opportunity to bring this family before you and we ask that you would just continue to guide them and bless them in your son jesus name we pray let us say amen, amen. In the midst of all of this, we know that God is a way maker. <clears throat> way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing.
Amen and amen. Amen. One of the reasons why I love Mountain View, and good morning, Community Church. Amen. Good morning. One of the reasons I love you all so much is when one, we always talk about when one person hurt, we all family. Amen. We all hurt. And so I think that's beautiful. I just want Brother and Sister Thompson to know that we love you all and we're praying for you all. And we family. Amen. Amen. And what better way to show that you love somebody with, with action. Action speaks louder than words. So we just want to make sure the Thompson know that. Um, if you love the devil, stay quiet. Yeah. I'm going to say that every Sunday. I got you. Two weeks ago, James and I had the opportunity to speak in Houston, and I want to give you this report. So we got, I got a call from two youth ministers, and because of James and I speaking in Houston two weeks ago, and also because of our great youth group, three people got baptized. And they said they love the way we do things at the Community Church of Christ. Let's give God praise, amen? This brother right here, I'm just... Um, He's a blessing to me. That's my little brother. Um, he definitely had made things a lot easier for me to work with the youth group. I can really minister to these young people. Amen. And, and James does so many other great things for these young people. He's very creative, uh, very positive, outgoing. Him and I, we get along tremendously. Amen. We don't let the devil come between because we family. We're not in competition. I'm too old to be in competition. I'm 300 years old, but I'm in competition. <laughs> um, but I love this brother. Um, I appreciate him. He's from Houston, Texas. He has a loving family. We love him at the community church, amen? <laughs> and also, I want to give flowers to our youth group. These young men are coming up here. You all know it's hard to get up here? Come on up here. And so every time a young person get up here and say anything, say amen. amen. Tell them you appreciate them. Because they will continue to come over and over again. Amen. amen. If I ask all y'all to come up here and just stand and look into the audience, it's not easy. But we at home, right? Because we what? The community church of Christ. Amen. amen. So James... All the way from Houston, Texas, a great youth director. He told me he's going to be short, but he's going to be powerful. Amen. So if everyone can give my, our great youth director, Brother James Jackson, a great hand. God bless you, James. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in the
Great is the Lord and great is to be praised. Amen. And the way I see that verse is that we should be able to tell how great our God is based on how great our praise is. Well, I'm going to say that one more time, that we should be able to tell how great our God is based on how great our praise is. So we're going to test that for a moment. Now, think about it, just throughout the week, throughout the month, if he's been an okay guy with you, go ahead and give him an okay praise. I expected that. All right. Now, if he's been a good God to you, then go ahead and give him a good praise. That was good. That was good. But we can do better than that. If he's been an incredible God to you, if he's made ways for you, if he's kept you throughout the night, if he's gotten you through troubled times, you ought to be standing on your feet right now, giving him an incredible praise right now. Amen. 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 You can be seated for right now. All right, once again, uh, I am James. I am the Youth Director of Community Church of Christ. And first and foremost, I really want to give a great big shout out and a great big love to the um, leadership and Greg and my sister Candice, also to JK and Carol, who is not here right now. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak to you guys on this morning. Um, like Greg said, <laughs> I won't be long, but I will be strong. It's like, <laughs> it's like one of my um, uncles always told me, when in doubt, be bold, be brief, and be seated. Amen. All right, all right. If you have the word with me, are you guys ready for the word? If you have the word, well, let's just go ahead and together stand for the reading of the word. We're going to be in Psalms 119. Psalms 119. We're going to start at verse number 9, and then we're going to end in verse number 16. Psalms 119, 9 through 16. If you have it, say amen. amen. How can a young person stay pure? Question. Answer. By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all of the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. And I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you're looking for a title uh, for this sermon, the title would be To See It Is To Know It, To Know It is to do it. The power of committing the word of our memory. Uh, we want to give a special shout out to the youth. This is Youth Month, amen. All right, all right. Welcome to the second week of our youth. Now, going back to the text, the writer tells us how he personally has practiced living according to the word of God. He sought with all his heart meditated on God's word, shared his word with others, and found joy in living by the word of God. Now, if you're looking in the King James Version, or if you're looking in a study um, Bible, the writer uses the second session of Hebrews 119 using the Greek letter bet. Brother Jackson, tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong. I appreciate it. <laughs> Which basically means house, a place or a tent. Now, with that being said, the writer could suggest or what he's emphasizing in that text is that making the word of God a home or a place in your heart. Making the word of God a home or a place in your heart. 
So now, how do we house the word of God? We have to use three points. This is the part where you guys start writing down for notes. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom requires understanding. Just like it takes both a man and a woman to come together and form a baby, when knowledge marries understanding, it has a baby, and that baby is called wisdom. All right? So when knowledge, the true nature of a thing, meets understanding, which is the enlightened purpose of that truth, a baby is born, and that baby is wisdom. Which exactly brings us back to the text for a minute. The young person said that I've hidden the word in your heart, verse number 11, I study, I gain knowledge. Now, with that knowledge, I recited aloud all the regulations that you have given us, verse number 13. I understood based off of the knowledge that was being given to me. Right? Amen? And now with that, verse number 15 says that I will reflect on your ways and I will be active on your ways. So how do we house the word of God in our hearts? By gaining the knowledge and understanding it. And with it, we learn to apply it to our decision making, which gains wisdom. Now, assuming everybody here has a brain. I'm assuming. So the brain is a complex organ that controls thoughts, memories, emotions, touch, motor skills, vision, breathing, and every process that regulates our body. Each part of the brain can be divided into sections. Scientists will call it lobes, which specializes those different uh, functions. And I want to focus on the main three, or at least three of the main choices. The optical lobe, which is actually in the back, focuses on the eyes by processing images and link that information with images that's stored in memory. It's the optical lobe. The temporal lobe is the area that is responsible for receiving information from our sight and our ears. Now, this plays a crucial part in the form of retrieving memories. And the last part, which is the cerebellum, which everybody which is pretty much knowing about that. The cerebellum is the hindbrain. That controls the body's functions. It coordinates movement and is involved in learned movements. With these three brain sections, with these three lobes, based off of what you see and store memory, your body can and will be able to move in a function that's based off the information that's learned and what is stored. To see it is to know it. To know it is to do it. With that being said, let's just focus on the knowledge and the understanding part right now. People listen and watch traffic reports before heading to work so that way they can find out about the conditions that they really can't see. Am I right? Now, with these traffic reports, normally they provided by a person that's flying around in a helicopter who has a large vantage point. The proof that people listen to the traffic reports and believe them is evident by their decisions on which route that they take. People don't just listen to reports just for their listening pleasures. They listen to get information on situations that they cannot see themselves. Now, as Christians, we need eyes that we don't have. Now God has a greater vantage point and provides that information to us in his word. And that's exactly what the word is. If you take notice, the word is a guidance of life. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, Paul told Timothy that all scripture is inspired. The NIV translation will also say that it's God breathed. And it's useful for teaching us for what is true that makes us relevant and makes us realize what is wrong and also for what is right. It corrects us for when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right and God uses it to prepare us to equip people to do everyday good work. Now, in this context, Paul is telling Timothy that there's going to be a time where people do not want to hear God's truth. People are going to want to do whatever is right in their own eyes. He decides that, um, that there's a culture where people are saying that it feels good, then do it. If it feels good, then do it. It's all about me. And it kind of sounds like the world that we're living in right now. Am I correct? In today's time, the Bible is mostly sometimes mocked, ignored, and neglected. Uh, for many people, the Bible is like the president. He holds top position, but he has no power. So you've got a world that's trying to distract you. So you must stick with the word of God and not with the crowd. Uh, the word says to be conformed by this world. Don't let the world systems determine your value systems. God wants your life to be built on truth. And that's why you have to have the word of God um, as your guide. That's going to tell you how to live, train you, and equip you for life that we are called to live. My second point is on 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse number 2. Like I said, I won't be long, but I As will be strong. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So Peter is telling us to crave the pure spiritual milk, the word of God. Uh, not just pure, I mean, not just crave it, but crave it like newborn babies. So that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now, pure means undiluted. It's another word for undiluted. A lot of us want the word, but we mix it up with other information. For instance, the state fair in Dallas, we're all in Dallas, we all know about the state fair. Um, they have these things called candied apples. Apples that's dipped in sugar. Apples by themselves, they're great and healthy fruit, but once you dip it in the sugar, you just kill the benefits of the apple, although it still tastes good. A candy apple is sweet, but its nutritional value is diluted because something with no value has been added to it. And many of us will read the word, hear the word, and then talk to people about the word, but then dip it in human viewpoints. And we want to stay away from that. We want to make sure that the word of God is undiluted. We want to make sure that it's pure. So like newborn babies, Christians are to avoid acts of discord and feed onto the sincere pure milk of the word, which refers to the divine substance that's drawn and pulled from the gospel. Amen. And now that we have the knowledge and the understanding, then there's the application. Taking what you learn and putting it into action. For the word to work in your life, you have to put forth action of the word of God. Get with me James chapter 1 verses 20 through to 24. James chapter 1, 22 through 24. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be, if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. 
he beholds himself and goes his way, and straightway he forgets what type of man he is. You are fooling yourselves if all you do is hear the word. If all you do is hear the word, you will be deceived. There's no benefit in scripture. There's no changes in our lives or any progress in our lives. Not because we didn't hear it, because we only heard it. So in verse number 23 says that do not be like the person who looks in the mirror and leaves forgetting what he looks like. I want everyone to stop exactly what they're doing right now. At this time, at this moment, at this given hour, I want you to stop what you're doing right now and I want you to look at yourself. Go ahead, look at yourself. That's right, you can. <laughs> you can. You can see, you can't see your face, right? The only way that you're able to see your face, the only way that you can actually see what you look like is because of a mirror. That mirror tells you what you look like and the mirror will tell you the truth about yourself. So you may think that you are that in a bag of chips, but that mirror is going to give you the chance. You got your mirror out there right now. <laughs> now, the glass mirror, the glass mirror was not a thing back in biblical times. I want you to take note of this. Um, that silver glass mirror, that was invented back in Germany back in 1835. So it wasn't in biblical days. Now, the mirror back in those days were brass mirrors. And they had to get the light to shine on that brass mirror. And they had to keep manipulating it until they get the reflection from the light, from the sun or the candle or whatever, or whatever so have you, of that brass mirror in order to see them to see exactly what they look like. That is why verse number 25 says, but whoever looks intently at the perfect law, the word of God would not benefit you by just glancing at it, you must gaze in it. The idea is to see your face. So when you go into the mirror and you go to the mirror to see your face, you want to look at you. Basically what the writer is saying is that I want to manipulate the word of God until I show you the real you. I'm going to reveal to you based off of what the mirror shows and not what you think that you are. You should be able to see yourself in the word. And of course, by doing so, back at verse number two, but verse number 22, it says, by doing what it, said, what it says. For the word to work and benefit in your life, you have to put in some action. Some people treat church how they treat school. Well, at least how I used to treat school back then. There are some people who will go to school in the most traditional way, but there are some who will go to school just to audit the class. When you audit the class, you go sit down, you get the information, but there's no outside requirements. You don't have to study nor take any tests. You get the information without having the burden of the class. Now, many Christians come to church on Sunday mornings and audit the sermons. They go to church, got their Bibles in their hands, sit in their, um, their seats that nobody else can't sit into. That's their seat. And they listen to the preacher. But all they want to do is audit. They don't want to be expecting to do any homework nor pass any test that God would give them to check their understanding. And as long as you audit your Christian life, there will be no passing grades and there will be no divine recognition and there will be no experience of your calling. The word is the word. Now it is the truth of God, but you have to put some action to that truth for it to be experienced in your life. You have to activate by response. When you do something, there is no action. When you do something, there's no action, there is no progression. You can say amen until you blew in the face, but if there is no action, then there's no progression in your life. The word of God must become a part of your life. 
You have to meditate on it. You have to think about it. You have to stay close to it. You have to abide to it. Uh, kids will relate to this. You know when you're on your phone for too long, texting, calling, playing games, and then you get that notification that your battery is low, but yet you still don't care, so you're still on there texting, calling, playing games, until then your, ba your battery and your phone just instantly shuts off. The battery died because it was off its charger for too long. In other words, it was putting out with no refuel, so it lost its power. It lost its anointing. It lost its ability to function at the level that it was designed to function at because it stayed away from the source for too long. And that's sometimes like us. We keep running on spiritual emptiness and wondering why we're still limping in our Christian life. We catch ourselves on empty because we don't stay close to the source of the strength on a regular basis. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but how can you if you're not studying and applying your word? And this is the lesson. As a matter of fact, you guys can get to standing right now. <laughs> you have to be able to not only know the word of God, but you have to apply and obey it to your life. Only then you can live a pure, just as the young person um, in Psalms 119 said and discussed before. If you want to come to Jesus, who is the word, John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. He was with God in the beginning, and through it all, all things, everybody says these things. Everybody say these things. These. these things were made. In him was life, and we want you to experience that life. In him we predestine, in him that we have the redemption through the blood of forgiveness of sin, and in him we are chosen. And we want that for you right now. You heard the word. The question is, do you believe it? And if so, we can actually have you to come forth right now, repenting of your sins and confessing that the Lord is Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. And even if you're just coming up here for prayer also, I want to do a specific and a special prayer. James chapter 5, um, verse 17 through 18 says that Elijah was a human as far as all we know, Elijah was a human just as much as we were, are. Uh, and yet we have prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, nor fail for three and a half years. I'm going to read that again. Elijah was a human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly, there was no rain that will fall. So none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crop. With that verse, I can definitely tell that a lot of things happened. Elijah prayed, and it wouldn't rain, and it didn't. And then he prayed that it would, and then it did. But something else happened in, in the middle of that. Crops grew. If crops grew when the rain came, that suggested that we're already having seeds that's planted in the ground. The story suggests that farmers were still sowing seeds in that dry dirt, even though that there was no rain, they still kept planting. And sometimes prayer can feel like that, like I'm sowing seeds in the desert. But I've learned that often when it feels like nothing is happening physically, there's plenty that's happening spiritually. And even though you can't see it yet, my prayer is that even when our prayers don't seem to be making a difference, that we keep sowing anyway. Trusting the one who brings the rain. My friends keep sowing. And that's the end of my message.
Smith commercial say a little dab will do you, that dab did us. As we ask people to come down for prayer, there might be some that's sitting up there going through some things in your life and you really don't know what to pray for. That the story goes about these two pilots were flying on a chartered plane. And they had two lawyers in there. And what happened was, after they got up to a certain height, the pilots passed out. And these lawyers didn't know how to fly the plane. So what happened was, they started calling on the intercom about, talking about help, help. And so the, the tower called back and said, can you identify yourself? Said because you ever did it don't have uh, pilot etiquette. And so the guy said, well, the pilots that were on here, they passed out. They said, can you identify the type of what you the call sign on your plane? So they gave him the call sign. And the, and the child would call back and say, I can see you, but you can't see me. See, all I want you to do is listen to my voice, and I'll guide you back in. He said, but what I also can see is there's a storm ahead of you that you can't see. But I can see the storm. But don't pay no attention to the storm. Just listen to my voice. As you listen to my voice, I'm going to bring you on in. And so as they began to go on, they began to get to the point to where they could see the runway. And the, and the guy came back on and said, now I'm going to tell you something. Keep listening to my voice and look at the lights on the runway. He said, what you're going to recognize is the lights look like a cross. If you just follow the cross on in, I'll land you in safety. Some of you going through a storm right now, you just don't see it. But he said, just listen to my voice and just follow my voice on in, and I'll bring you on in. Some of you did with the thing you don't know what's ahead of you. But just listen to my voice and I'll bring you on in. We want to understand what the voice of God is saying in our lives right now. God's been talking to you all week. He's been showing you some things all week that you've just been overlooking. But there's a storm ahead of you that you don't see. But what God is saying, I see the storm. Just listen to my voice and I'll bring you on in. Somebody been going through a storm right now and just listen to God's voice. We want you to come on down. We want to pray with you right now. Whatever that is, we want to pray with you. We want to talk to God on your behalf. Because we don't know what that storm looks like. But guess what? There's somebody that sees the storm ahead of you and can tell you, I'm going to bring you on in. So we want to come, we want you to come down. We want to pray with you right now. But we want to call to God on your behalf. Whatever it is, you don't have to, you don't have to write out a call, you don't have to put out anything. We just want to talk to God on whatever you're going through. Because we all, if, 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 to be honest, we would be honest, everybody in here ought to be right now, right now. If we want to be honest with ourselves, all of us are going through something. But guess what? We know somebody that can bring us on in. We just listen to his voice.
Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Lord, before we go any further, please forgive us of sin. We didn't mean to hurt you, but we admit that we did it. We come in clean with you. But you already know this because you're everywhere all the time. And Lord, you know what's going on in the lives of these people in this circle. I don't know, but you know. Lord, the tears are falling. Hearts are broken. There is some doubt in this circle. There is some fear in this circle, Lord. There is some anxiety. There is some depression. Lord, that's why we come to you. Because you're the only person who can do what needs to be done in our lives. That's why we come to you. We come to you because you're great. You're mighty. You're magnificent. You've never lost a case. Never lost a case. And if we're honest, Lord, we can look back over our own lives and see how you did it. Over and over and over and over and over again. But Lord, we don't want to stay in the past. We're going to walk with you. We're going to stay in anticipation of what you're going to do for us. And we're going to trust you because of your word. It's good. You said your word won't return to your void. And we trust you. Even now, we believe that what we're asking for is already done. Happy way. Thank you for James this morning, Lord. Bless his heart. Bless his heart. Bless his heart, Lord. Be what you need to be for him. So he can be what he needs to be for you. But not just James, Lord. All of us. Give us what we need. Lord, sometimes we don't even know what we need. We don't know which way to walk. We don't know how to talk to people. We don't know how to treat people. Lord, show us the way. Show us the way. But don't just show it to us, Lord. Guide us. Guide us. Guide our steps. Guide our thought process. But Lord, protect our minds now. Protect our hearts. Protect our children. Protect our families. But Lord, I say protect Andre and Michelle and the kids, Lord. Keep your arms around them now. And help us to be who you created us to be by showing Andre and Michelle how much we love them. Thank you for this word. Bless those in this circle and bless those in this building, Lord. We love you. We need you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Have your way now. Amen. Sit up. Chapter 16, verse 16 through 17. 
three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Uh, report cards, if anybody has report cards, then <clears throat> they can meet on the side over there. Watch ye therefore, you know not the day, the day when, when the Lord shall call your soul away now, if you, if you labor, striving for the one day you shall to doing things a certain way and every now and then we found out that there's a different way to do things and still accomplish so uh, normally as a as a church we are used to having our um, prayer that during the offering or after the offering and then we dismiss some of you all have paid attention that uh, we're doing things differently so what we're going to do first of all as I uh, move out of the way you still got something right Okay, yeah, yeah, come on. So he's going to, um, uh, yeah, no, no, not the closing prayer, but, but going to actually do the uh, prayer for the offering. So what we're going to do, y'all, uh, going forward, we want everybody to pay attention that, that uh, after, the, after the offering prayer, the prayer for the offering, we're going to actually not be dismissing at that time, okay? So y'all have paid attention and you've heard the, uh, the praise leaders leading us in a song that is what we're calling benediction, okay? Uh, and, and so there will be that song, and then there is a uh, message, a prayer that is delivered through the song, 
okay? So we're going to ask everybody after the uh, prayer for the offering. He's just going to pray. We're going to bless the offering as we usually do. Then still remain seated for the benediction through the song. Is that fair? Oh, y'all didn't sound excited about that. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, also, Brother Brown, uh, Deacon Brown has also said, if y'all got y'all report cards, didn't nobody say nothing today. Next week is the last time uh, for this whatever seat session or what have you. So make sure you bring your report cards next week for uh, Deacon Brown Technology, all right? Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for coming here today. We thank you for everyone who has made it here safely. Thank you for... Uh, thank you for everyone coming and thank you for uh, letting us make it here safely. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Yeah. 
place, but never from his presence. God bless you as you go along your way. God bless you. Minister, we're going to present information that you need to know about the youth. Okay? So, so we're not done yet. Whenever they finish, they'll let you know we've already had our closing prayer. Okay. Good morning. And what we want to do is talk about what we're doing in our youth ministry. Can I call up my youth workers? All my youth workers to come up. And some of our youth, come on up here. Come on up here with Brother Greg. Y'all give him a hand. Give him a hand. And we're going to, can I get a microphone? That way. If y'all see Brother James out there, didn't James did a magnificent job? Y'all give him a hand. Give him a hand. Okay, as you can see, oh, this is a good one. Oh, okay. Too bad I can't sing. If I can sing, this would be great. Is that all right? As you can see, this is some of our youth group, and these are our beautiful youth workers. And as you see, y'all give them a hand. All our great youth workers, and some of our youth. And so what we're trying to do, let me say before, I'll say this real quick, because some of my youth going to give you a testimony. I think the greatest thing I noticed with our youth group this year is growth. Amen. When we first started this journey, J.K. told me he wanted us to do a consistent youth worship. And so funny, at that time, I wasn't really, I, I was going through a lot. But he told me if we'd be consistent with the youth worship, he said the youth worship would grow. And I'm telling you right now, these young people, when they come into youth worship, it's been an amazing they grow spiritually. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, I see that they do love God. They love God tremendously. But our young people are going through some trials and tribulations. 
It's hard to be a young person. And ministering to young people is different than ministering to adults because we should know better. Amen? Amen. And so uh, I, I think that's been our greatest, greatest asset we have. And so what I want to do is I want to thank Jordan Hamilton, who's done an outstanding job with the kids' group. Um, yeah, she, she deserves it. And her beautiful staff. Amen. Um, um, she's creating a spiritual foundation that will go to elementary, and then will go to middle school, and then high school, and then hopefully they'll be great adults. Amen? Amen. And so Jordan and her great staff should be Give her a big hand. And like I said, we all in it together, amen? Because we're under one body. Um, I'm going to let some of them talk about some of the things we're doing. And then after that, um, we'll let some of our young people give you our testimony. Okay, so Jill, do you want to talk about, oh, there he is, James, all right. And now, come here, Brother James. And now you can see, we need some more men, huh? Now, my, bo my wife bossed me at home, and I got all these daughters in my life. I need some more men in my life to help me out. It's just James and I. And so when we go on trips, it's just James and I. So we can use some more manpower. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, Jordan, let her come and talk about the kids' crew, crew a little bit, and then we'll pass the mic down. Well, um, there isn't much, but... Uh, um, Greg and James and just the help of all the people that were here. I just didn't expect myself to be here, but and I get emotional because I really love y'all's kids. I really love y'all's kids and I love teaching kids. Um, 5 to 12 and then they transition over to the big kids, but um, yeah, there isn't much, but uh, bring your kids and bring their cousins and bring their friends. Amen. 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 I'm going to let Sister Lynette talk about the music because she is an icon. Amen. In the music industry of Church of Christ. Sister Lynette is so quiet and classy, but she does demand a lot and she expects a lot of our young people. Amen. Y'all give Sister Lynette a hand. Good morning. Um, so I am the youth director for uh, the youth choir director. Excuse me. Here we go. And there are two groups for our lovely, lovely uh, children that we have here at the, uh, what is it? Community Church of Christ. Here we go. So we have, our first one is our Lils. And they range from the age of four to 10 for that particular group. And then for our teens, it goes from 11 to 18. We meet, if you don't know when we meet, I need for you to make sure that you are locked into Flock Note. That's where we do a lot of our communication. Uh, and, and I've also sent links. I'll resend that out this week. Uh, we meet first and third of every month for our um, rehearsals. So please, please, if you have some little ones that love to share their voices, uh, please send them to me. We would love to have them. So that's every first and third of the month, and, um, and I look forward to seeing them soon. Thank you. Come on, beautiful. This is our girl right here. One of our great youth workers, and she wants to speak to you all. Good morning, everybody. Oh, hold on. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chikaya Talton. I'm one of the youth workers here. Um, I am here working with the youth because of the uh, super heartfelt announcement that I call him Coach Brown because I know him from school too. But uh, Deacon Brown got up about and said about Brother Andre Thompson. Brother Andre Thompson was one of my youth workers or was my youth minister 10, 15 years ago. And to be in this place to be able to serve in this capacity is a real full circle moment for me. Um, and like I say, I'm here because of all the hard work that he and several others put in over the years. And so it gives me a great honor and joy to be here to work not just uh, kids you, but soon I'll be transitioning um, into the classroom with the bigger kids to start doing Bible studies. Um, and my zone, uh, my prayer is to get closer with the young ladies. Uh, I'm a school teacher, so I see a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm telling you, um, if it doesn't start in the church, we, we, we've already lost the battle, okay? 
but no way we're going to be able to win the war. So this is why I'm here, and once my school is out, I'll be able to give more time um, to the older kids, um, which is my, which my pure, it's, it's, a, it's an honor and a joy to be able to do so. See me around, uh, what's our age group, Jordan? Five to 12, and then the other is 12, I believe, to 18. So if you have any questions and you see me, feel free to stop to ask me for anything. But I'm here, and I love what I'm doing. I'm thankful for the opportunity to serve with these amazing people and our amazing youth. Sister Dana, she does the mental health part. Y'all give Sister Dana a hand. Hey, everybody. You put me on the spot. I didn't know I was about to talk. Um, like you said, I do the mental health component with the youth. I also, uh, we have counselors, we have certified counselors at church here. Um, I'm in the process of that certification. So um, when it comes to that, um, bring your kids to me. They can talk to me. I'm a great mentor. We can go and have fun and hang out. And I'm going to get the information I need out of them. Um, with that being said, May is Mental Health Month. So look for mental health tidbits. And I'll be focusing mostly on like suicide, depression. The kids go through a lot in school that they don't tell you but they'll tell me or somebody else. So just look for those tidbits and thanks. Amen. 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 Let me say this, a lot of times our young people come into youth worship and I can see that they're going through a lot because we raise teenagers, amen. And when they leave youth worship, we always tell them, I'm gonna love you when you're good, but I'm gonna love you even more when you're going through a tough time, amen? Because that's when they really need us, is that all right? We gotta love them more when they make mistakes and let them feel that it's not a life sentence, it's just a life lesson. Amen? Amen? We gotta let them know that. That way we won't have no suicidal attempts. Amen. Okay, so now, uh, who else I gotta speak? My wife don't want, she don't want to say nothing. I'm not the system show, don't want to say something. So what I'm gonna do is have our young people give a little testimony and then Bishop will come up here and, and say something. And then I'm gonna have Brother Roland close us out in the prayer. Is that all right? I love seeing my young people do stuff for the church. Amen. started coming here in the youth group it was kind of like in terms of like the female to male ratio it's kind of just me and then you know we had some other guys over there and then occasionally we'd have like some girls come and visit but for the most part it was really just me coming back from COVID and stuff and so with the youth group I've seen us um, trying to outreach to girls a lot more especially to kind of pull them into our youth group kind of build that um, sisterhood in Christ experience for them from a young age and so from my personal perspective to all of y'all out there with like daughters or nieces or granddaughters bring your girls like this isn't it's not just a group of kids like coming to church like we are i don't even know how to put this it's just like we talk about things and we connect with each other in ways that are just it's like it's life transforming and so you really want to bring your people your, um, your daughters and things here to get that experience, to kind of build those bonds with people because you'd rather them build friends in the church with people who are going to uplift them than fall into the wrong crowd, right? So make sure you're bringing your girls here so that they can get that experience. And then me personally, I mean, although I'm a senior and I'm about to be gone, um, I'm always there to kind of talk to them. So if you need somebody kind of to like talk to your girls or maybe they need some advice or something, I mean, they have all of these ladies here that would help them, but I'm also an outlet that you could use. I have nicknames for our youth, so I call Brother Roland, I call him a superstar because he's a great basketball player. Um, so I want him to say a little something too. Here you go, superstar. Um, I feel like the youth is like a place where everybody should feel wanted and like you shouldn't feel like you don't have to be here because, like, we are, like, I don't know how to say it, but it's a place where you should feel welcome. And, like, um, it's like a welcome place. You should just feel like you should come. Amen. The youth is really special to me. You can, it's like, you can talk to anybody there. You can feel comfortable talking to people. It's trustworthy. You have people to trust. You have people you trust there. Everyone is amazing everyone can relate to you um it's just really amazing the people there the youth ministry the youth ministry the people who work there they help and everything i'm just thankful for them i just feel like the youth
because like my second family and that they're always here for me. They're like my therapists. Like I can talk to them about anything and get anything off my chest around them and I just love them. Amen. Uh, pretty much after what they said, the youth is very just, I mean, it's a fun place, a good environment to be around. Um, everyone get along. Uh, anywhere we go, it's fun, good vibes, good everything. So uh, that's all I got to say. The youth is, you, y'all give all our youth a hand. Amen. Give them a hand. They're very important. And now I want to introduce this classy guy. A bishop of the Derek Thomas. Good evening. I want to thank this department, youth department, those who head it for all they do. There's a lot of things that the youth department wanted to do this year that they weren't able to do. Uh, so I'm going to be asking perhaps uh, next year uh, that you support them when we come to you. We will be coming to you and asking for your support uh, in the days, in the months to come. Uh, not only in your prayers, but also with your monies. Uh, we're trying to do more. Uh, kids, if you don't do things, they don't participate much. So we got to do more to keep them engaged, happy, and out of trouble. And we need to do that in, in the church itself so that we may keep them from those places that uh, may cause them to get in those kinds of, of trouble. Uh, so we're going to be coming asking you to do certain things, uh, maybe even uh, choosing one of the youth uh, to support them in the things that we're going to do next year. Uh, and they're going to need to support. Uh, we don't want the families to take on those uh, uh, things themselves, but we want to support them as much as we possibly can. So when we come to you, just it won't be much, but it just be asking for just a little bit of your help in many ways, but mostly all probably is going to be uh, uh, money support and what they want to do. And I'll tell you what they want to do. They want to go to the youth conference next year. Uh, we really thought that we may get a chance to go uh, this year, but because of certain things, it didn't happen. But I want to make sure we're ready next year. I mean, ready to go three or four months ahead of time that we're prepared for them to go. And I may come and asking you to support certain youth that we pick one that we all support. Each individual we support, maybe three of us, make sure that one can go. A group of us, make sure another one can go uh, where the family won't take up on all that uh, themselves. So if you would like to support them, you can, but it, we want to come to you probably in two or three months and start asking for your support. So just keep that in mind. If you can support them, we will really like to appreciate that. Also, Brother Greg, uh, want to thank him. Brother Jackson, want to thank you. All the sisters that support and do your role, I want to personally thank you and let you know that is anything that you need, make sure I know you need it. And I'll try my best to make sure you get what you need. Uh, you, stay engaged. I know some of you didn't want to come up here, but that's okay. I understand that. But stay engaged uh, with the youth department so that we may all grow together. Amen. Let's give them a hand of I just want to say, okay, okay. I just want to say this real quick. All this cannot happen if I didn't have my beautiful wife with me. I want to give it, y'all please ride with me. Um, she's a very, my wife is a very quiet, classy, beautiful person. Y'all, she don't like getting up here, but she does a lot of stuff behind the scenes. 
and I want the church family to know I love my wife and respect her tremendously. I think that's important. And she's one of the reasons why I'm trying to be a decent man. So I want to give, can y'all give Sister Candace a big hand? So that's my baby girl. And Brother Roman. I have one more thing that I want to share with you all since we're talking about the youth and keeping our kids in positive things and around positive people. Um, how many of y'all are familiar with the Dallas Citywide Youth Course or was familiar or if you were part of it, could you raise your hand, stand, say amen, something. The Dallas Citywide Youth Course is going to have a rehearsal, okay? This is open to all youth across the Dallas Fort Worth area. If you are singing and want to sing or interested in singing or want to learn how to sing, want to be a part of something that's meaningful, I don't know if y'all know, but the Burnett's were some of the original directors. Gerald was a director, uh, Carl and Weaver, and so it's really uh, it's a lot of history in that, but that's something that's going to take place Saturday, April the 27th at 11.30 at Lawrence and Martyr. So it's a lot of people who are in the Dallas Youth of Christ who were a part of that, so I just wanted to put that out there because we have a lot of singles here, and I think if we could get a few represent to represent Mountain View, that would be great and something that Again, it'll help our youth stay engaged and grow a closer relationship to Christ. So if you need some information, I'll post it on social media, but I can send it out to whoever needs it to. Amen. 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 Brother Rowan, going to lead us in a quick prayer. Also, they're having a birthday cake in the back, so can you pray for that? So come on, my brother. Y'all give him a hand. It's good to see young men doing God's work. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for letting us all be here today. And I pray that you just guide us through the obstacles of life and bless this day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.